African Union's African Peer Review Mechanism sees Fitch's statement highlighting risks to South Africa's credit profile after the election while suggesting an ANC DA tie-up as an inappropriate attempt to manipulate the country's internal politics. For more details on this, we're joined by Mishak Mutiza, who's lead expert for country support on ratings agencies at the EU. Mishak, a pleasure. Good afternoon. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon to your listeners. Wonderful, Mishak. I want to get right into it here. Uh, when we think of the role of credit rating agencies and uh, you know the expressing of the opinions on uh, issues of fiscal policy, monetary policy, and general policy in a, the country, what is uh, the end goal? What are they trying to uh, you know, uh, make sure is, is put out in the open? Yes, uh, so the role of uh, rating agencies is to inform investors who are holding positions in the form of uh, bonds or stock in uh, the financial market in that jurisdiction. And that information is presumed that it should be independent and uh, accurate and very factually based. So that's the basis. So these institutions, as you know, they occupy a very key role in the global financial architecture to the sense that uh, every commentary and every uh, statement they issue, a uh, rating action, uh, investors uh, move because, uh, you know, the investors platform is uh, an arena of uh, opinions and uh, acting based on information. With that said, I want to then speak about, of course, uh, this uh, one uh, utterance by Fitch. Uh, of course, I'm making commentary about South Africa's uh, debt and the ability to service the debt to sustain a certain debt level while then, you know, inferring or actually outward stating that a certain coalition uh, would be a more beneficial debt. Did they overstep, Mishek? Absolutely so. In our view, we thought that uh, that commentary was... Uh, a, a bit of manipulation of uh, the negotiations that uh, are currently taking place in South Africa and also clearly outlining a position that uh, the rating agency prefers uh, in observation that uh, it will yield certain positive policy direction. We thought also it was uh, very manipulative and uh, more suggestive of uh, the direction that uh, the rating agency will take. So we have several fronts that uh, we thought uh, this could have been uh, viewed differently. Mm -hmm. First, uh, that uh, it was very premature, so it was not factually best uh, because uh, the rating agency had uh, not understood or had no basis in which uh, the policy direction of the ultimate government in South Africa is going to take. And uh, in its language, rightly so, they used uh, the words like permutation and uh, uh, that uh, they were assuming and uh, just thinking that uh, that's the possibilities that we merge out of the negotiation. So we thought that uh, outlining certain um, uh, coalition arrangements or GNU that include uh, the DA as a positive uh, policy uh, position to take was uh, too uh, prescriptive and manipulative. I want to speak also then uh, just about uh, you know the 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 way in which uh, these uh, these reports uh, from credit rating agencies often present themselves. Because of course, Mishak, we also have a school of thought that thinks that even the way that uh, you know fiscal policy um, and even monetary policy are commented on, all of that also does lead to certain behaviours and can also be overly prescriptive. Are we saying uh, that you know we? Uh, th that we just have to deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis here, and that when it comes to monetary and fiscal policy, uh, that is uh, less, uh, less of an encroachment than it can be when it comes to hard politics. Well, uh, in short, I would want to respond this way. Mm. Uh, we can, uh, you know, any analyst or any official can uh, issue any statement or any public uh, pronouncement. But we should not discount uh, the role that uh, and influence that international rating agencies have. So, in other words, they cannot just claim to be exercising free speech and uh, uh, exercising their right to put information out there. Because this is not just uh, an ordinary institution. These are institutions whose 
commentary and voices are listened to by the market. We value something called um, investor sentiment or confidence. And we also value something called uh, a, a, a perception, which is uh, the basis in which investors take a position either to divest from a country or to invest more. So when they present a pessimistic position, uh, which could be a likelihood scenario in uh, their own view, uh, then even if the fundamentals are still strong, investors tend to discount that information and act uh, in a certain way, something that analysts severally call a self-fulfilling process uh, prophecy. And that is very important to note that uh, uh, investors uh, act in this direction and uh, such outcomes are normally realized, which could not be true in actual fact. With that said, Emishek, what is the appropriate action moving forward here? Uh, is it, uh, you know, rating agencies refraining from encroaching uh, as, uh, you know, they, uh, as you say they have in this regard? Is it a po possible apology? Is it a retraction? Or does it also, uh, you know, uh, put a responsibility on bodies such as uh, the AU and others uh, to be vigilant and then to publicly, uh, you know, um, maybe denounce and uh, rebuke a certain uh, commentary like done in this regard? Well, let me point out that uh, it's important to note that uh, we are just not doing this work without a basis. Mm. This is a mandate that was entrusted on the African peer review mechanism by the Assembly of Heads of State and Governments, which uh, spells the degree in which the African Union a, a, you know, places value in this kind of agenda, because it has a direct impact on the cost of borrowing, not just at a national level, but it is subnational and also corporates that uh, operate within their jurisdictions. So uh, on the other side also, we uh, tend to want to engage with the rating agencies more so that they understand that uh, in as much as we don't have regulations yet on the continent, like in other jurisdictions, say for the European Union. So in the European Union, they don't do that because commentaries are highly controlled and they should be issued at a specific day uh, of the week. Especially, I think if I remember well in Europe, they should be issued on a Friday after close of business uh, because uh, uh, investors need time to digest that information before they quickly react and uh, produce uh, some market spikes that might not be necessary. So in Africa, it's a, something that we are working on to sensitize regulators to improve on their legislation to make sure that they bring this fear of information control under uh, uh, their own watch. But uh, in the process of doing so, because that will take a little bit of time, uh, we keep on engaging with the rating agencies to make sure that the information they issue must be very factual and also considerate that uh, markets react to that information in as much as they still have a, a free passage on uh, a, the, the financial markets in Africa at the moment. Wonderful, Mishaka. Thank you for speaking to us on this and also uh, just uh, giving us uh, more detail to this uh, perspective. That was Mishek Mutize. He's lead expert for country support on rating agencies at the African Union.